Welcome everybody to the Table Rush Talk Show live. I've got I've got the traffic ninjas, Sylvia and Crystal, uh, Kristen Myers, excuse me, of the butchering of your name there. Uh, two good friends of mine that we've uh seen each other. We've met personally in Mexico, we've met in Arizona. Um, I've got you now in Mexico, and you two um help Shopify founders drive highly converting traffic to their stores so that they can generate sustainable and predi predictable income for their small businesses, correct? Yes. Yes. <laughs> we we yes. got there in the end. But I, I just want everybody to know that, that pre-conversation that Kristen and Sylvia and I were having before we went live was that we were talking about Kristen and Sylvia's superpower and how that can be elusive for the entrepreneur, how we can have these gifts and we don't see them. And, and you offhandedly said, well, yeah, one of our clients, you know, we were digging through their stuff and we, we, we showed them, you too showed them how to get an extra four and a half million dollars. And we're not claiming that anybody watching this is going to get these kind of results, but I just want to say you offhandedly dropped the fact that you helped one of your clients get an extra four and a half million dollars lying per around year. that was lying around per year. Yeah. Per year. It's a big number. I'd like an extra four and a half million dollars that was just lying <laughs> around. But I just want just saying that. So everybody watching knows that uh, Sylvia and Kristen have skills. So if you're listening to some backstory, just know that it's worth it because they've got gold <laughs> for you to listen to. Um, Traffic Ninja Hacks. This uh, We're going to talk about your, what did you call it? The uh, the I had it written down the traffic ninja the seven process. deadly social media mistakes. Was it that one? Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. You were saying, uh, oh, a ninja phrase, the ninja oh, phrase, the ninja, phrases, the ninja yeah. phrase. We're going to talk about, we're going to get to the ninja phrases, yes, and then the seven deadly, uh, the seven deadly social media mistakes that block conversions from your e commerce store. And if you have an e commerce store or trying to sell stuff. Uh, you know, e-commerce wise, you probably want to know this information. Um, some of them just to open some loops, right? We've got trying to be likable. Number one, ignoring the social media re the social media reality. I'm gonna save the rest for later. I want to dig into your backstory. Um, so, but and again, everybody just watching, you can click on the links that are in the show notes and follow along as we talk about content. But I will say from your trafficninjas.com website, the trafficninjas.com. You've got this great, great blog content on there. And we're going to get to this. But when you told me how you created that content, your your literal ninja phrase process to create those blog posts, and those are now like number three. Those are right. If you look at the metrics, am I saying that right? Yeah. 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 Like on Google search for some of those ninja phrases, yeah. we're position, you know, three and two and, and one. Yeah. And, and that's the whole point of ninja phrases, right? And that's the whole point why we're traffic ninjas, because I guess as entrepreneurs, we've got this belief, the false belief or the illusion that we just have to do everything and that it's just going to be so, so, so crazy hard. And that getting free traffic from Google is impossible these days. And then unless you are willing or ready to pay $5,000 to an SEO agency and then, you know, wait another 12 months and pay another 30 grand in between, that it's just not going to happen. And, you know, we also had these beliefs in the past. We also had those beliefs that we had to do everything and that every single thing, you know, we were just like pushing uphill and just like grinding away, grinding away. And it was really killing our mojo, right? If I had to say it that way, because it's like nobody wants to, you know, invest so much money without guaranteed return and wait another quote to quote 30 years to get there. Right, yeah. like because there's a reputation with like the search engine type marketing that it takes a long time to get results. Like you put the effort in now, and maybe in a year you'll see something. Okay. Yeah, but that's a bit of a myth, and we'll we can talk about that. Yeah, oh, I love and so it. 
and that's where the whole ninja way came came through because you know we also lived and breathed that ourselves and we were like hang on a minute like we're smart we know digital marketing we've been in this industry for such a long time but there's got to be an easier way you know we we even at that point where we had been in that industry for a long time it was always working with bigger businesses that had the budgets and that had the teams and it was like you know, branding and agency and, you know, everything was like so flashy and, you know, people wearing high heels and looking amazing and whatever. And we're like, okay, but this stuff just does not work for small business. Like there is just no way. So does it mean, you know, for such a long time, we lived in that illusion that there is just too much competition, that there is just like no space for, small entrepreneurs to cut to cut through the noise to like cut a, through the noise. That crowded marketplace how do how do we cut through so we're looking and, for answers and we were also teaching more of the mainstream stuff and it was only when we started to ask ourselves like hey i mean there's got to be an easy way there's got to be an easy way um you know the what's the saying the the seekers are the finders or whatever the saying is anyway that's that's how the whole ninja ninja way came around because when you look in the history, like ninjas are the guys who are underground. It's so underground. They sneak up. Nobody expects them to be there. Yeah. You know, they're often against the whole army, but they succeed because they, not because of their physical power, but they just do things intelligently and go unnoticed. And this is what the whole ninja philosophy is about. Like, let's go unnoticed because we're not trying to, uh, even with our e-commerce customers, like we're not trying to get here from zero to million dollars in three months, but we're trying to, we're, we're making sure that we consistently and predictably get from zero to 1,000 to 5,000 to 20,000 to 30,000, right? So, so it's that journey where you essentially go unnoticed for traffic and for space where nobody expects you to go and nobody wants that because for big businesses, these are leftovers. I love it. And so it sounds like that's uh, a very fruitful soil to dig in. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of opportunity, but um, it's a Sylvia saying it's not the, the big fish that bigger businesses are chasing after. So there's a lot of opportunities, but you have to know where to look and how to look. And do it intelligently because if you try and do all of it, you'll get overwhelmed as well. Right? Yeah, so. you get overwhelmed and you get burned. And uh, you know, lots of entrepreneurs we work with, lots of Shopify stores and and work commerce stores in general, e-commerce stores. Like entrepreneurs have the false belief that they missed the boat. You know, I missed the boat. My stuff is not going to go viral anymore. I missed the boat on first on Facebook, then I missed the boat on Instagram. I missed the boat on YouTube. And now people still believe that they even missed the, the board on TikTok. And mm. it's just like, that's just not true. Because, you know, what we need to realize is that followers are the old currency that, in my opinion, is worthless. Uh, if you are not like seeking actually traffic and sales, the ninja way, right? Because like people just, just want to focus on followers and it's like oh my god i missed the boat i'm not going to get the followers i'm not going to go viral but you don't need to go viral to make sales that's the whole point you don't the need followers to followers aren't the key the the followers aren't the key say that tell me that again that the the you don't need to go viral literally tell me that again tell everybody yeah. that again yeah like you did not miss the boats you know followers are the old currency like how many uh, so to speak, influencers we may we met over the who, years over the years who have hundreds of thousands of followers. We even met a guy at a conference. They had millions who, of followers. Who had on, millions of followers on YouTube, but was not making, not able to. He was not able to make a dollar. He was like a big fat zero. Mm. So, so the whole the whole point is that we just got to understand you know what are the steps in the strategy we're going for and you know one of the things that we teach is like you know or or even if if i reverse it like one of the biggest mistakes entrepreneurs make is that they just focus on the sales it's like oh my god 
you know, I've posted three TikTok videos and I haven't got any sales. Oh my God, my product must suck. I must suck. My video must suck. And then I must be charging too much for the price. Let me slash the price of the product. Let me discount. Yeah. Right. And then what they end up doing is they just focus on the sales or lack of it. They spend like 99% of their time in their store. As Kristen said, like slashing the prices, updating the images, you know, hiring agencies, they're going to do user experience for another five grand, you know, all of these like different things or, or photo shoots. How many people we met who like spent thousands, thousands of dollars on photo shoots. And that is such a huge mistake because if you look at a shopping process, you know, shopping is not an event. It's a process. You know, let me give you an example. Like I was recently buying new workout shoes. Like I don't just walk to the first store and say, those shoes, give me to me and walk out. No, I'm going to go to the first store and I'm going to allow myself time, right? Because I know that I'm going to go to the first store. I'm going to see what they have. You know, yeah, they kind of have, I don't even try things on because I'm just looking what they have. Then I'm going to go to second store. In the third store, I'm going to try something on, but it doesn't quite just fit. And then there is a pair that I really like, but they don't have my size. So it's not until I come to the fifth store and try the 10th pair of shoes that I decide that actually I'm going for this one. And that's when the exchange happens with money, right? And online shopping is the same thing. We, we go shopping online. We do our research. People even call it, I'm doing my research. How many, how many times have we heard it? You know, I want to buy, I don't know, new headphones. I've been doing my research. You know, then you do reviews, then you do comparison, blah, 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 blah. At the end, and on, only at the very, very end, you are like, okay, what's the price? And so people just don't understand this fundamental principle of shopping being a process and panic when they see no sales. But what we need to realize is that because it's a process in any e-commerce store, a great conversion rate, a great conversion rate is 3% which means three out of 100 visitors actually gave you money, three, okay? That's a great conversion rate. Like we're talking close to basic class. Basic conversion rate is 1%. That means 100 visitors gave you money, you got one sale, okay? So one of the like major mistakes that literally kills like 99% of all the sales is that is that entrepreneurs just focus on those sales and they forever, forever like work out what's their checkout experience, what's my price, what's my image. But if you don't have the traffic for that store anyway, it's just not going to happen. So imagine you have 100 visitors and you have best-in-class shopping experience, you're going to get three sales. But if I, and, and, that's, and that's your, like what's the word for it? The that's, that's glass that's ceiling. Awesome. Yes, that's your glass ceiling. Or you can do it the other way and you can go like, okay, I'm now really just going to focus on driving high quality traffic to my store. Even with a poor conversion rate, you will have made like five times the sales. I, I, I absolutely, I hear what you're saying. So it's, 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 it's like first let's shatter the illusion of what a good conversion rate is and get down to the reality that 3% is best in class. Like yes. that's big budgets, AB testing, all this stuff. That's the people that if you can model them, great model that. Um, if you can find those, those sites to model or that traffic source, I suppose. Um, but Hey, 1% is really good. And so, hey, let's shoot for one. So be realistic with your conversions and and don't focus on, on having a better picture to go from 1.1 to three because the better picture is not going to do it, right? Or, it's not going to cut the mustard. It's not yeah. the domino. The domino yeah. is the traffic. We need more yeah. traffic. First, you need traffic. Then you can focus on conversions, right? Because typically is, is an, as an entrepreneur and as a small business, you've got limited resources, right? Yeah. yeah. So 
So, so let's say you've got a basket of hundred bucks. Yeah. So where are you going to put those hundred bucks? You know, most of the time people say, oh, I'm going to put the hundred bucks into the conversion because I want to see sales. But essentially, if you put that hundred bucks into generating traffic, you, you have 10 times the potential. I love that. Let me ask you a question. Um, well, I want to address two things. First off, this this time myth that um, Kristen, you spoke to, um, but hold that thought because I want to make sure we get both of these in before I forget. But the traffic, uh, your traffic ninja method and this ninja phrase, is it mostly organic traffic or is it organic paid or paid or where on the continuum yeah. is that but hold that thought hold that thought okay. um because i want to go but the first one is this time you talked about this myth of time this idea that like if you're trying to build seo traffic or do these sorts of things that it it's you have to do it for years before you finally get traction and momentum. And you're telling me with your guys' formula, that is not true. Is that what I heard you say earlier? Yeah, so, I mean, there's a variability of it all. Like when you're going after the the um, the phrases that big brands go for, they're super competitive. So it's a very, very crowded landscape. And you posting one blog article about that topic that's not going to cut the mustard and get you into page one of Google because there's so much competition. In fact, it's not going to get you. It's not going to get anything anywhere at all. <laughs> it's almost it's a waste practice of time. writing. <laughs> it's practice writing. <laughs> yes, but where the opportunity is, there's hidden untapped phrases, and typically these phrases are a little bit longer. So it might be instead of one word or two words, it might be four words or five words. And there's all different ways we can find out what these are. And we've got some tips and strategies on how to do that and how to do it effectively. But when you kind of target those ones, there's much less competition. So it's true that there's less search volume than the than the really competitive phrases, but it's much easier to get ranked into a very good position in a very short amount of time. I'm talking about in weeks or months, not like six months or nine months or 12 months. And sometimes it's even days, right? Sometimes yeah. it's like literally... Literally within days, yeah. Yeah, so you can see you can see a huge result. We have one specific example for us where it was a four-word ninja phrase uh, that we were using that we were not ranked on Google for that at all. Um, so if people type in those four words, we didn't appear anywhere. And then we created this article with using our method, using our framework, and then it's a fifteen hundred word article, I think, yeah. from my memory. And within a week, we were on page one. And when I just checked it before this interview, we we're in position two now. Last week, we were in position yes. three. So that's like what's possible. Like, yeah, that's not bringing us the same amount of traffic as those short, um, broader keywords, phrases, but it is bringing us traffic. That's amazing. Everybody watching, are you hearing this? I mean, how cool is that? And could you imagine that? Or how powerful would that be for you to have in your arsenal, arsenal where you could use Kristen and Sylvia's framework, uh, write a 1500 page article that Word. focuses on that four huh 1500 word no, 1500 no word not page sorry golly <laughs> whoa 1500 no wonder you find these <laughs> 1500 word article and then have it be number one or number two or number three or at the top of the of the search i mean that is powerful yeah. um, yes and I, and i also think that people don't realize that unless you are on page one then why the effort in the first place you yeah. know, because people always think that, oh, I've got all of this content and all of this product and, um, you know, I'm selling, I don't know, beautiful candles and yeah, I'm on page 10, but page 10 is big fat zero. Let me ask you, Misha, when you search for something on Google, how often do you scroll to page three? Only when I'm desperate as can be. <laughs> Only when I'm so, so desperate. It's like random, if ever. It's not yeah. very often. Right, and, I got, and, it, and even do the test for yourself. Like, if you do the test that you, you know, how Google tells you, like, hey, there is, I don't know, how many millions of searches. Yes. If you actually click on the last page that they are saying that they are displaying the result, there is nothing in there. They're <laughs> they're not even displaying that. They're not showing it anymore. They're not showing it anymore. <laughs> they don't even. They won't even waste the the. Uh, 
the uh, the data the the data warehouse space. <laughs> the get, rid yeah. get rid of it. Yeah, I've got the fixed ones because I wanted to. You know, the, the, there was a few times when I wanted to go to something really, really independent that wasn't like you know marketing skewed, I guess, because it's all illusion at the same time. That which is another crazy topic. But anyway, uh, and then I I couldn't even go. To, you know, I couldn't even find those like underdogs, if you like, because yeah. they're just like we're not displaying them I, anymore. I think, like, the example we're looking for like, a really badly optimized. Um, oh, that's right. We're yeah. looking for a really badly optimized example, trying to find one on we Google. We wanted to show, show that to our customers. <laughs> but you yeah. can't find it on Google because Google only shows you stuff that's optimized. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's not gotten even to that point. Yeah. Damn you, Google. Well, <laughs> that is great to know that it's either really first page or die. Let's be real. Yes. Um, and so, well, thank you for answering that question about the the about that sort of time myth and how to and how to crack that code. Yeah, and if, if I can add something, it's yeah. not just first page or die. The first top three results are seventy five percent of all no, clicks. The traffic. Wow. So it's not even first page or die. It's like, you know, we're talking max top five. It's amazing. I mean, that's, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's horrifying, I guess, is a better is a better way to say it. And are you guys hearing this? Like how powerful a tool that um, Sylvia and Crystal, uh, excuse me, Kristen have created. I was I truncated your name together. <laughs> um, so uh, I think you sort of answered the question is the traffic organic or paid or where is it on that arc that we're talking about so answer that for me so i i'll if you're okay to answer yeah, that. Sure. yeah. <laughs> so essentially we always talk about three steps uh in our framework so first we need to get the traffic organically and that's organic from google and social media then we talk about conversions and number three is when we can start scaling and so that's when we do paid right so, you know, paid traffic is very important and there's time and place for it. Uh, but we just don't believe, particularly in this in this environment, as you know, Misha, yourself, it changes all the time. It's not it's not the way to start with it anymore. Like paid media used to be a lot more optimized for small business. You could generate really great return on ad spend, really great results very quickly, very easily. But over the past 18 months or so, with all the changes to privacy, that kind of performance has really died down. And so it's become a bigger business kind of game. So you need to have more money to throw at it to see if you're going to get some results. So that's why we've shifted this. Yeah, because we used to use a lot of paid traffic ourselves, you know. Uh, we would easily, um, prior to those technical changes, we would easily spend $15,000 per month just on paid traffic, you know, because it was working like clockwork. It was very predictable. It was very yeah. um, cost-effective. Yeah, it was. I, it was. <laughs> it was. Well, I think that's when when we had first met back in uh, Mastermind in Paradise, where I, I want to let everybody know that uh, Kristen and Sylvia invest in their business. You guys invest in your in your growth, invest in your knowledge. We are in a coaching group together, and uh, we pay. I mean, I would say a significant amount of money for it. <laughs> so I know that you guys are are constantly networking and looking and we've had many conversations about how to be more effective how all this sort of stuff and um, but anyway so when we met in mexico last year um at this mastermind in paradise um i mean you guys told me that like hey yeah you had this machine you you had a system that was working great you you had this budget you were like you just said spending fifteen thousand dollars a month on ads and and had an effective webinar, right? Wasn't it going to a webinar, I think, of some sort? Yes. yes yeah. And then overnight, <laughs> like you guys just got, well, they used to, I guess before that it had been the Google slap. And now this is the iOS slap or something. Yes. But but um, I think before you we touch on that, maybe you could tell us about the arc of going from corporate. It sounds like successful corporate. You both walked away from legitimate paychecks to to grow some online Shopify businesses. Maybe you could bridge the gap between corporate to getting your business to where, hey, you're crushing it enough to where it was brutal when the iOS change happened. Yeah, for sure. So uh, for me, like coming out of the corporate job, yeah, very steady, um, good paycheck. 
when I left onto the entrepreneurship journey for the first year after leaving the corporate job, I didn't earn a cent, zero, zero dollars. And had to work for your wife. And had to work for my wife full time. And uh, there was not the cash flow in that first year, like the year of 2018, in my, my memory, calendar year 2018. Uh, the business was, you know, doing some stuff, but it was a lot of work and no revenue. So that was, uh, yeah, that was tough. So, so the journey, the journey, I have to say, was quite tough, and um, it kind of started with, with first we were doing lots of independent consulting. So we were doing independent consulting for e-commerce brands, and those e-commerce brands were quite established, and you know we were doing some amazing work. Can um, I ask you a question? And I'm sorry to interrupt. So is this your your corporate careers were in this sort of e-commerce space? So you were bringing that knowledge out of your corporate jobs into a, into a consulting. You're like, why are we working for the man when we could where we could yeah, bring we both, our knowledge? Huh? We had different different um, skills and experience, but essentially we were both consultants within the companies that we were operating within. I was yeah. in like the digital technology space. And Silvio. And I was more in the marketing, marketing and management consulting space. And so, uh, okay, so Kristen, um, you in five seconds, what was your skill set that you like? If you could put it into words, like yeah, so it was like technology strategy, technology implementation, project management, internal consulting. That, that's kind of my skill set. Okay, cool. And then uh, uh, Sylvia, what was? And for me, it was more: how do we make more out of what we've got? <laughs> so in it what? was like in 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 any industry. So I was a management consultant um, when I first started my career, and so you go to essentially different brands with different problems, and you go around solving problems, and and lots of those problems are, you know, we either have high expenses or we have low revenue. Mm-hmm. And so you you keep on solving those problems and eventually you start solving them in a smaller niche. And I started solving them more in the digital marketing space. Okay. Um, and the, when we say digital marketing space and e-commerce space, you know, it wasn't just established brands, but would have been also places like banks, for example, right? That were uh, that were getting customers online and how to essentially get more customers in an easier way and you know optimize what they're doing so that was kind of our our background um so we we did have that background but the whole point was not just how to work for ourselves but also how to really have that freedom of location you know my, my family is in europe and i was living in australia and when you do First, we started like with freelancing, you know, with freelancing consulting, and we were still getting very high daily rates, but you are just physically dependent on that location. And this is before COVID, right? When before the whole thing of working from home and working remotely, like this is you know, several years before COVID. So yeah. there was a big shift um, for us, like not having to, yeah, we wanted to get away from that. We wanted to get away from that. Yeah. We wanted to have that location and and the other thing that came into that was that we sometimes felt that we were helping these soulless organizations get more money. And, you know, the question was like, well, we've got all of this experience. We we had so many friends who were entrepreneurs and we just could see straight away that they were not doing things that they could be doing that was completely harming their sales. And many of them were struggling big time, you know. And so we were like, well, we can really help here. Um, and so that's how we started to transition, only to realize ourselves that the transition wasn't so easy for us either, right? Um, and later on, we realized the transition wasn't easy because we were doing what so many entrepreneurs do, and that's like trying to be everything to everyone, you know? Like, hey, I'm going to come in and I'm going to help you solve this, 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 this. And people don't just, it's not just what they not one, but it's also what they don't trust, right? And there is this saying, I've forgotten, uh, this famous entrepreneurs had that saying that how people bond on pain rather than the goal where you're trying to get them to. Mm. And so we're like, well, they're going to pay anything for the pain, but we're not even talking to them about the pain. We're just like 
trying to present this bright future, which nobody really wants, you know? And so that was, that was the a really hard moment for us because, you know, just as we can now understand, looking back now, as we can understand our, our customers, when you don't see those conversions, you just so discount yourself, you know, you are like, like that self-talk that goes on in all of our heads. It's just brutal. And we're not even aware of that. Right. And then after like 18 months, when you have worked so freaking hard every single day and you, you know, quote to quote, have nothing to show for it. And you bump into one of your ex colleagues whose face you were so sick of seeing every day. And they're just like, you know, all arrogant, like, hey, Sylvia, so you've made your first million yet, you know? And you're just like, ah, oh, I don't want to shoot the finger here on the camera, but, you know, that's kind of what you want to do. <laughs> and that that was really tough, you know? That was really tough for us, but... And also financially as well, because, yeah. like, your habits, right? Like, our habits of eating out and buying certain things to um, going places, traveling. We had to make some adjustments. <laughs> <laughs> so. uh, but we were so glad we we stuck to it you know because it was like as people say like it's in the darkest moments it's like the yin and yang you know it's in the darkest moment where you find your light and it was the same for us you know it was in the darkest moment where you know we were just in so much like that at that moment in the business and where we really thought like this is it and you know then we kind of gave it one last shot and, yeah. you know, really worked on, okay, what is it that works? What is it that doesn't? And there's got to be a better way. And, and finally, you know, it just suddenly went poof. And what, what year was that? And what was it? What was the thing that came to you when you were at the darkest hour? So what year are we talking about? 2018 we're, or something? Yeah, yeah we're talking 2018. 2018. Yes. So yeah. for, for us at the time, and, and again, we, we see the same, the same mistake with so many entrepreneurs that we meet it was the trying to be everything to everyone we had a thing on our website we're a team of consultants and we can help you with this and that and that and that and any problem you've got we've solved it and guess what we've got this membership program you can join it for just 49 dollars a month and we'll solve all your problems right and we couldn't give it away for free <laughs> we literally couldn't <laughs> who wouldn't oh pay 49 dollars a month but it so turns out Turns, turns out, yeah, it turns out even our friends didn't. <laughs> so, so, oh my God. So you guys have walked away from effectively what's the big bucks in your corporate careers. Yeah. Your egos are just getting hammered because you're running into the old yeah. friends and they're like, so you made your first million yet? And you're like, well, not only no, but we've spent everything we have, perhaps got into yeah. debt. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, trying to be everything to everyone and so what gives you the the come to jesus moment or this moment of like uh all right we got a niche down or whatever was it a coach yeah or, yeah what is Tell the me. what is the biggest pain point in a specific so we so we essentially look back and we look back to all of these uh businesses that we helped and what specifically we helped with, because there is so many areas, right, in every business when you've got operations and customer service and sales and, you know, like we have excuse me, technology. And and again, it just ends up being this whole, like, a toolkit. We have this great video that Sylvia recorded on YouTube many years ago, like maybe even, I don't know, 2016 or 2017, oh. about some topic. Anyway, different to all the stuff we teach now. And um, some big company contacted us and they wanted to license that to put that into their corporate training to teach their thousands of employees around the world. So it was just like we've got this random, we had this random collection of random content, but it was all good stuff, but it was just too broad, too scattered, too all over the yeah. shop, right? So. Yeah, and, and we found that, you know, so many entrepreneurs we work with make the same mistake at the beginning as well. You know, they're trying to hide the fact that they're a small business and that they're very, very good at certain small niche. And, you know, it's like, as, as Pedro says, right? Uh, Pedro Adal, for, for those of you guys who don't know, he just says, just build a niche that's so small, only you can fit in. 
I love that. So is it, was it that corporate person who found that random YouTube video and said, we want to license this? Is that when the light bulb went off? Was that the I light bulb moment? Someone found it on, uh, on YouTube and they were from the corporate and they reached out to us and said, this is a great video covering this topic. It's exactly what we need to teach our call center. They have a th thousands of employees around the world. So can we have that video basically, please? And we, we licensed, licensed it to them. But, but, but the light bulb moment was more, the light bulb moment was more, you know, subtle and dramatic at the same time. You know, it was more like, you know, it's in the middle of the night. And, you know, when, when you are in a financial stress and it's not just financial stress, it's the stress of your, it's almost like a personal crisis, right? It's like, like, like all of us take it so personally and I specifically used to take it so personally, you know, thinking and feeling that I was worthless, so to speak. Right. And Sylvia was the CEO. Like I left my corporate job to work for Sylvia. So yeah. And I was so, like, well, if I, you know, my oh husband my left his job for this, you know, I felt the responsibility and the crunch and, and, you know, and we had just gotten married. And so it was suddenly like, like, Oh my God, like, what kind of partner am I who can't like make this business work? And so it was more dramatic in the sense of like, you know, me literally losing my shit, if I have to say it that way. But we call it the chair incident. Yeah, we call it the chair incident where, you know, a chair got broken. A chair got broken. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, <laughs> it was also then subtly. I realized that, you know, I, I let that attachment go to, you know, how things should go. And I was like, okay, so let's, and, you know, Kristen was always very supportive. So, so we're like, okay, let's just start looking at what else, like there's clearly like it's feedback, right? It's data. So how can we, you know, if this was our customers and this is, this is kind of how, kind of how the process worked for us. Okay, if this is our customers, if this if this was our customers and we were consultants for this business, what would we do? Because we've been really good at helping other people with their problems. It's a common pattern we see. Like it's easy to solve other people's problems, but hard to solve your own. Yeah. So that was kind of the and that, and that was the light bulb moment. Yeah. Right? Like, okay, so this is let's just pretend this is not our business. This is somebody else's business, you know, Joe Smith. And this, these are the problems they're facing and this is what they've done. What is the biggest obvious thing? And it was like, oh my God, like it's, it's just has been in front of us this whole time, right? Like we just were not, not speaking the right language to the right customer, not, 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 not even like trying to connect to the right customer through the right way. Because we didn't have the clarity ourselves what it is yeah. that we wanted to be or, or, or do like specifically. Yeah. So I have a question around that, but from before we get to that, so you guys are newly married. I know I've been through financial tension and been in, you know, relationships and that financial tension can create you know that psychic tension in the in the relationship especially if you're the ceo so i get that so you're supposed to supposed to be happy newlyweds and perhaps there's a a, a, a bit more tension and frustration than, than you had hoped for um is that is that what i'm hearing yes yes there was, there was it was quite difficult and um i think like we're at the same time we're both very growth oriented and we're learning lots of new things like we were um, doing some personal development programs like with Tony Robbins and uh, reading different books on NLP and learning about different types of um, practices, methods, psychology um, to kind of help us kind of release some of this tension that was building up as well. And I attribute a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of that stuff was very valuable for us. I think it helped us yeah. a lot work through some of those. Um, yeah. It was very valuable, but it was, it was still really hard. And I think, one of the reasons why it was very hard was because I very quickly realized that I was value putting my personal value directly connected to how much money I was earning. Yeah, it's a great lesson right there. And as soon as we can detach from that, the better. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then suddenly you and then suddenly when you earn zero, 
you put the value to zero or if you're minus 30 grand, then you feel like minus 30 grand, but that's not what your value is, but it's just so hard to detach from that, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, thank you for giving us some color and texture around the psychic pain <laughs> you guys were going through. Who threw the chair? That's the question. Who do you think? <laughs> like, Sylvia, did you throw the chair? I threw the chair, but <laughs> I didn't throw the chair at Kristen. Like I knew better than that. I knew okay. better than that. Uh, but I just, you know, I just like threw the chair on the floor. Like I was just so frustrated. Mm -hmm. And must have been a lot of force because the chair broke. And honestly, <laughs> like the the thing is that you know, I've, I've got a Slavic background, you know, the way how people kind of solve problems in Europe is a little bit more heated, you know, and, and it's not, I'm not going to say it should be accepted or that it's normal or that it's, you know, not strong because it is strong and, and I don't, I don't think it should be tolerated, but, you know, I kind of knew that Kristen didn't have this upbringing and this background because, you know, in his family, everybody's extremely calm and, present and there is never big fights and you know if there is a fight it's never heated it's like one person walks away or or it's more kind of like the quiet silent household thing which is also not good but it's more passive aggressive rather than aggressive yes yeah but you know i had more the aggressive expression and so when i threw the chair on the floor and you know the chair broke i was like uh oh uh oh it was a this, big day this moment. is this might be it but you there, know Kristen but, might be like over with this but there was there was tough for a couple of weeks after that but um <laughs> that was i think that marks a major turning point that marks us. a turning point yeah. Yeah. yeah and also turning point inside of myself i really felt like with that i let that energy go and i really hit rock, rock bottom that day and i do remember you know and and depends i guess you know what your beliefs are what beliefs are of your listeners are but i did feel that that day i really kind of connected with some energy of light mm -hmm. that was trying to get to me for a long long time like it was some sort of cathartic release in that anger that Something, that's, yeah. that left your system you know in some way it left my system and i did have an epiphany you know, a few hours yeah. after that. And that was incredible. That was incredible, yeah. And it created the space for that epiphany. So the epiphany was, again, in five or 10 seconds, that epiphany was... <laughs> Just was, that we need a different system, you know, yeah. that we were doing all of these things that like, oh, we're doing this, we're doing this, we're doing this, because yeah. in, in the corporate world, that's what it had been looking like. I, but we're like, no, we just need a system. I, One, two, three, let's simplify it. I think you know? in a nutshell, we were overcomplicating everything we were doing. Right? And we mm. just said, let's let's really make it simple, break it down to one, two, three. And, and from there we did. And that changed everything in the business, like the marketing, the operations, yeah. the customer delivery. And so, then we like threw it to 35 countries. Then we like grew to 35 countries within like, you because know, cause yeah. your clients were bringing you there. Is that is that what was going yeah. on? Or? Yeah, yeah, because we we had mastered. I would say we had mastered or got really good at um, paid advertising online and scaled it. And those ads were good, running globally, and uh, we were attracting customers and converting those leads into sales and customers from thirty five plus. I think I think it's even more than thirty five. Yeah, maybe it's forty now. Yeah, but you know, majority the majority was in North America, but we did have yeah. you know, presence in those other countries too. So how quick was the hit bottom moment epiphany comes in we got to do things different we got to simplify we got to niche down you know niches are in the riches uh how does uh pedro adeo say it again everybody should check out pedro adeo too the challenge guy I, he's at the challenge guy.com or something but check it out his content's <laughs> amazing right yes. what a gift that we yes. have him in our in our coaching group yes. um access to him uh but anyway so like within months did, I, I mean is it like the changes come are coming fast and quick and you're having successes right away or was it like yeah. this yeah yeah it wasn't it wasn't that we just made like millions of dollars the next day like obviously there's a journey and there's steps to go through so but it was quick quicker than it i was think quick, quicker yeah. than we expected i think um cool. we started seeing results yeah 
Yeah, fantastic. So you're having tremendous success. Now you've got a budget of of fifteen thousand dollars a month for your ads. And what is it, fifteen thousand in three out, or what's your what is your ratio of like ads to return to return at that point? Like at peak yeah. peak, yay. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So, so at that point, we were mostly having customers on monthly recurring memberships. Okay. So I would say, you know, from my memory, it was typically the first month of that membership would be the cost of acquisition. Yeah. Uh, so it would be, you know, what you call 1x ROAS. But in memberships, it works slightly differently because then you work on the tenure, right? And so, you know, if your customers stay 6, 9, 12, 18 months uh, and some of them, you know, move on to your higher value programs where you um, can work with them more closely, um, you know, it's a, it's a very scalable model. Yeah, yeah. I, I got it. I love that. So ROAS, return on ad spend, which I've learned, you know, <laughs> that's, that's anyone listening. If you have no idea what that is, either did I, I was like ROAS. I had to hear that a few times before I finally had the courage to go, uh, what's ROAS return on ad spend. So you had, it sounds like a one-to-one ROAS or return on ad spend. You would put $1 in, you, you get that free month or what have you, or maybe so it might even have been negative, but if you if your average client stayed on for six months or nine months or a year, the 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 profitability of that, as you said, Sylvia, was super scalable. Like it went up really yeah. quick. And then they're buying your higher ticket items and this and that. And I want to get into the ninja traffic stuff here really quick. So, but just real quick in 30 seconds, maybe one of you can tell us what what were you teaching at that time or what, you know. Yeah. So we were mainly teaching what um I guess we were doing ourselves, right? So we were teaching mainly paid traffic, uh, how to get paid traffic. But then one of the major things is how to create an offer for your e-commerce store and turn the traffic to sales. Um, Particularly for paid traffic, it's extremely, extremely important because if you get high quality traffic and you pay for it and then you are unable to convert it to a sale, uh, it becomes a very negative operation right very quickly very quickly yeah. so so the the main focus was paid traffic and then creating an offer to convert it to sales fantastic and again this was in the e-commerce space shopify store so you yes. were helping people effectively scale their paid traffic and at the same time convert that have it convert into into sales into e-commerce sales on their Spotify stores. Yes. Is that what I'm hearing you say you were teaching? Yes. Yeah, awesome. And so then you're crushing it, you're having success, you're flying all over the place which you guys love. Obviously, that's one of the reasons you got into into uh Mexico. entrepreneurship anyway, is so you <laughs> yeah, could yes. not be tied down. Um, and then overnight it changes. Yeah. I mean, literally overnight. More or less, more or less like those changes came out. Uh, was it April or March, March or April? Yeah. And there were, you know, there was lots of kind of. What year was it? Sorry to interrupt. 2021 by now, or I've lost track or was it 20? 21. 21. So 2019, 2020, they start alluding to the fact that it's going to change. It's going to change. It's going to change. It's going to change. There's the war between Apple and Facebook over privacy. So officially that change happened in September, 2020, but then it still took months and months for that to take effect. Right. Okay. And so until it takes effect, nobody really knows what is it going to do. It's all just guesses, right? Yes. Because until, like, I guess one of the things we were always doing for our customers and we do it now as well, is we always test it ourselves so that whatever information we provide, we can rock solidly say this works and this doesn't and this why works. and we've, how much budget we put onto that and because we've tested we've, it. We've right? tested it, yeah. We've got skin in the game, yeah. And cool. so that was that was the thing. Like first there was, you know, the change happened officially, but there was no kind of effect to that. And it wasn't until April 2021 when we started to see and feel the change, you know. Mm. The performance of the ad started to decline and uh, it started to kind of then seriously decline. But 
we were in the mindset of, oh, well, you know, it's just temporary. It's going to come back. It's going to come back. It's going to come back. And then we didn't change fast enough ourselves. Yeah, we were ignoring it for quite a while, I have to say. Not not necessarily ignoring, ignoring, but just thinking that, you know, there are so many smart people out there. They're going to work it out before mm-hmm. us. And, you know, there is still 2.7 or 2.8 billion users on Facebook. Every month, active like active users every each month, yeah. And Facebook is still selling that advertising space. So, you know, surely, as we say in Australia, she'll be right. But she wasn't right. Uh, and the reason why it wasn't right is because it was kind of a double double punch, or how would you say that? How would you say double whammy in We're, American a English? A left and a right, a left, a left hook and a right hook or yeah, whatever. Yeah, double whammy, coming. a double whammy. Yeah. yeah. So it was kind of a double whammy in the fact that the every click, every every click got roughly on average five to ten times more expensive but in the me at the same time the quality of the click decreased ouch and ouch yes so that was a big ouch so um i'm sorry to hear that (laughs) and then we meet officially and then um I get to see some arc of the pain in, in, in the midst of you two uh, reevaluating again, perhaps too late, but that's all right. Necessity, necessity is the mother of invention. I love that saying. So uh, how do you stumble across this? Again, well, why don't you just give us, so you stumble across this traffic ninjas or this 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 ninja phrase idea, and you have some other terms around it, this framework. Um, quick, tell us quick what that framework is, perhaps, or you want to tell us how you found it first, or maybe yeah. Could so kind of. I think in the program we talked a lot about paid traffic, but we also taught in that program other things too. We didn't just teach the paid traffic. We, we were covering some of these other topics like email marketing, search engine optimization, and a few other things as well. Organic traffic, Organic yeah. traffic strategies. You know how to be seen on social media, how to be found, how to be referred how to get your place into the different uh, places where your audience are looking. So we're already teaching a bunch of these things, but everyone that was coming to us, the hot thing was paid ads. Help me with my paid ads. Help me with my Instagram ads. Help me with my Google ads, my Google shopping. ads. that was the hot topic. So that's what kind of required the focus. But that suddenly became a less hot topic. (laughs) And people started asking us other questions. Well, you know, how can you help them with the other stuff? I'm like, well, great, we've got this content on this other stuff here, start there. But then we start to look into it more deeply ourselves. So we already had expertise in it, but we went further into it ourselves. Like we embedded ourselves in some other coaching, some other training, some other masterminds, some other conferences, just to kind of get the latest, like what's the latest thing happening in these things right now? And that's kind of helped us double down on that ourselves. So we're building on that foundation we already had, um, but we've, we've grown it since then. Okay. But it- the question was also, how do we simplify this, right? Because, because even when you find what's working and how it's working, it's typically, uh, it's typical, typically different kind of business that uses that. And how are we going to find the untapped? And how are we going to make it specific to e-commerce, right? Because all of our customers are e-commerce. They sell physical products. And small business. And like small business. And lots of them are under 5000 per month. Yes, and lots of them are, are businesses that have a handful of people working in the business. So they don't have an army of people to go and yeah. do this stuff. And so that was the whole journey. It was like, okay, how do we make it simple? How do we make it simple? Like there's got to be a better way. And that's essentially how the ninja framework came around because it was like as we already mentioned you know like we've got to go for the untapped for the little known you know we've got to go for the easy low resistance like it cannot be something that's going to be hard that's going to take a long time to to create and essentially we started to workshop and map out okay we know this is what we know it's true about digital marketing this is not what we know it's true about traffic and conversion this is what we know it's true about e-commerce. This is how it's changed. And then out of all of those things that we knew was true, we were like, 
if I just took something, what is the domino? We always look for the domino for ourselves and for our customers. Like, what is the easiest thing that the 20% is going to deliver the 80% result? And, you know, it was very, in a way, it was very methodical from this point of view, wasn't it? We was yeah. like, we were literally cherry picking and testing ourselves. What is it that's going to create the domino effect? so that we can apply it really fast for ourselves and, and for our customers too. Awesome. And so in the, <clears throat> so what's the, what's your uh, ninja, your ninja traffic strategy strategy? Do you have like a, uh, in a nutshell, what it does or can you say <laughs> that or I don't, well, I, basically I'm giving you an opportunity to, I just want to make sure that I reference, Hey, we, you've got, you've got a master class coming up and I, the links in the, in the show notes, yes. but you've got this, tra- you can go to the traffic ninjas.com forward slash masterclass. And you're going to show people how to generate organic traffic in this rich, fertile, ignored soil, right? And, yes, um, where well, there's then... sixty thousand searches every second on Google. So you know some of those, some of those are likely to be related to whatever it is that you're offering to the world. Mm. Yeah. So that okay. that that's part of it, right? It's like how can you how can you start ranking uh, in search traffic in Google real fast? So that's that's one part of that strategy, and and that's what we call is your hot traffic because those people are really really looking for what you've got. And the other thing that's often extremely ignored is the social media landscape that we already talked about, right? And 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 the fact that people are just so focused on the followers and people just want to do things like we're creatures who get used to doing things a certain way, you know? And, and we see so often that um, entrepreneurs are like trying to whip sales in Facebook groups and you know, do all of these like one-on-one networking and, and you know, posting on Facebook. But again, we need to start looking at what is the domino here? What is the domino and what is it that social media platforms give exposure to right now? Because that keeps changing and it normally lasts about two, three years at a time. And the way we need to think about this is like, for example, Baywatch. Have you, have you uh, ever watched Baywatch? I'm familiar with it. Yeah. So I grew up with Baywatch, right? I used to love it like like um I don't even remember the actors, you know, Mitch Buchanan, he was like David David Hasselhoff. Oh David Hasselhoff. David Hasselhoff. Yeah, David Pamela Hasselhoff. Anderson, of course, was sort of that was her yeah. springboard. Yeah, and, and actually just a fun fact, um David Hasselhoff was also a famous singer in Europe at the same time. He was singing in German. And uh, I just remember him like doing all of these songs. Like we just, we just loved him because he was like, he was like the European, not European. He was like the European dude who made it to Miami, you know? <laughs> so, but anyway, oh back, to, back to, back to the story. The thing is with Baywatch, uh, not many people know, but Baywatch when it first started was a complete flop. And it was a complete flop and the TV network that picked it up after one the first season was like you know what we're going to ditch this because nobody's watching it and then he had that smart idea he was like well how about i just go around as many networks as i as i can and don't offer it as a as an exclusive content but just try to get the the contracts with as many local networks as i can like the syndication the syndication and as he did that, he picked up, you know, a few fans here and here and here and here and suddenly collectively compounding effect because people are not loyal to a network, right? People are loyal to a show, not a network. And suddenly it's just, boof, went wild. And so... And it ran for however many seasons it, uh, ran, it ran. However many <laughs> years, they even made it into a movie recently, right? And so... This is sometimes what people don't realize about social media, right? That that social media is nothing else, but it's a TV network and you are the show. You've got the show. And without you, they've got nothing. So they need you. They don't always specifically want you, but they need you. 
<laughs> right? Because yes. without you, they have nothing. Without without people posting stuff on Facebook, Facebook has nothing. The feed is going to be empty. Yeah. Right? And the same is true to TikTok and Pinterest and Instagram and YouTube. Like without people putting content on there, they've got no content there. And so what people need to realize is that it's not about like going wild on one network. And it's not about like, you know, having all these followers, but it's about understanding what is the domino and what network is right now giving giving exposure to what content because they need the content, right? So I'll give you an example. Like Facebook used to be, I uh, used to give a lot of exposure to uh, to businesses, right? Uh, because they needed the content. So, you know, way back when, five years ago, it was relatively easy to start a page and to start posting content about your product. And before you know it, you've got 1 million followers and, you know, you're getting all of this organic reach. Now, Facebook got really popular and uh, with popularity as it normally goes with its network, you know, the network, as, as if you like, got like a little bit more arrogant in the way like, hey, you know what? Like you've got, you want the reach, you've got to pay to play. Like I'm going to give you the viewership, but you've got to pay to play. And all of us were happy to pay to play because the cost was sustainable and it was win-win. We were all making, you know, we were all, all being able to sustain our businesses at the end of that. Um, but then Facebook was like, you know what? We're not going to do this anymore. We're not going to give you the reach anymore because, you know, we are too big, too powerful. Um, and so essentially it became completely impossible to get that organic reach on Facebook until TikTok came to the show, right? And what, so a new TV network just appeared. A new TV network. And so... What entrepreneurs have to realize is that it's impossible for one human being to be in two places at once. Okay? So if if a user is going to go into TikTok, which TikTok is the fastest growing platform right now, it means they're not on Facebook or they're not on Instagram or they're not on Pinterest in that very moment. Okay? So... That's why we can see in in Facebook financial results, you know, over time they they start they started to struggle with that. Like I know that they have their earnings call. I think it's today or tomorrow. It's this yeah, week, this we're week. So eager, we're, we're eager. So eager to see the results. Eager to see. But I remember about a year ago or, or six months ago, they had they attributed like a thirty billion dollar loss of ad revenue to all of these changes that are happening. Right? Yeah. So a they had, so they had the privacy change, but then TikTok came onto the scene as well. And was stealing the attention, right? And as, as they were stealing the attention, suddenly all of the other platforms started to panic. And as they started to panic, guess what happened? Facebook started to realize that, okay, we're going to have to make our platform a little bit more like TikTok to keep people here longer. And suddenly started to give users and businesses again more exposure for free but you just need to play by the rules that they want you to play. Okay. And, and this is, and this is the, the ninja strategy. This is where it comes into play. It's about understanding how these social platforms feed into one another. You just do one piece of content per day. You put it strategically on all of the platforms. It only takes 15 minutes, but oh boy, like the, the potential that has, for your store or in general for your online business is incredible. And it has nothing to do with the amount of followers that you have. Like it's not dependent on you having thousands or millions of followers. That's, it's, that's, that's, that's the key. That's the key because followers are not the currency. It's, it's, what the, it's what the person who sees your content does outside of following because a lot of followers don't exactly. mean anything anyway. So it's like, hey, if they're in engaging or or uh inspired the, to go ahead it's bringing the traffic to your website right so if you have yeah. an e-commerce store it doesn't matter if you just have two followers in fact we've got some customers who have eight followers yeah we've got we've got a customer who has eight followers on pinterest and generates 
I think last time I looked was like 47,000 uh, views on their profile every single month. Because, and it's growing, right? Because they know how to be seen and found. And so you, you asked before, what's the kind of framework that we, we teach? We kind of break into three main categories. One about how to be seen on social media. How do you get seen there? How do you get found when people are searching? How do you get found? Like the, what are the steps you have to follow? And the final one is referred. How do you get referred by other sources, by your partners, by networks, by media, by yeah. public relations? So there's kind of the three main buckets that we we um, put our stuff into and, and go through. And you relatively easily, you know, with very little effort, capture that traffic. And then, you know, with few tweaks, you just convert it to sales. Uh, because as an e-commerce store, people are mainly visiting your store because they're interested to buy anyway. That's interesting. So it's really literally completely, I think it's worth saying again, outside of your followers. It is outside of your followers. Your followers yes. are an irrelevant number yes. in this particular strategy. You have somebody yes. that has six followers on Pinterest, but is driving 50,000 and growing yeah. or 40,000 a month and growing looks, yeah. which is con which is converting to traffic to her store and purchases is yes that what I so, heard you say? Yeah. so the, exactly so the 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 next step after that is obviously we need to make sure that those people don't just look at us but they also click right okay that's why it's not about viral content because viral content again is worth nothing if it's just like you know somebody farting like i saw some <laughs> video of somebody farting yeah. and it's like well this video is about nothing you know it might it might go viral but it's not going to sell the product Unless it's something to do with with that, with that you know. <laughs> cool. So uh, uh, I love that. So the followers are worth nothing. The vi virality of your content is worth nothing, um, in effect, unless it's it's uh, driving sales and and it's not necessarily the follower. The follower is not a relevant metric to gauge success it's truly just sales so you could have zero followers or six which is pretty close to zero so thank you for <laughs> sharing that number right and uh and and viral so and and no nothing going viral but still generating looks and purchases so you've got you've got the your your you've got the how to be seen how to be found how to be referred and then it's how to convert is that the next step no? yes then yeah. how to convert and then how to scale up to that with pay so, yeah because it all starts with traffic that's why we're the traffic ninjas the traffic is the beginning of you need the traffic for everything yeah. else to happen and it's kind of back to that example we mentioned at the beginning that so many people just focus on those sales and and all they see is like oh my god sales or lack of that right yeah. And then they just forever in, inside their store work on discounting or changing images. But really, that's still a glass ceiling if you're not driving the right traffic to your store. Like driving the right high quality traffic to your store is the key. And the sales will happen by default. Like even if you never worked on your conversion ever, ever, you still have unlimited potential just by bringing the right high quality traffic to your store. I love that. Thank you for that. Um, so uh, I've been just taking notes because I love that. So driving the right <laughs> high quality traffic is key and and the conversions and sales will happen by default. And I think that what I love about that is like, it's like when I was in my various sales career, you know, I've been in sale. I was in sales 20 years before I, uh, up into 2015. Um, but, um, you know, you, you have the right marketing or you have the right traffic and it's like, all you have to do is not mess it up, right? When your <laughs> message is crafted correctly and you get that perfect customer to show up to your door, they're going to buy. You just have to not blow it. <laughs> right. And yeah. it's like, all right, I'm just going to worry about not blowing it. And then I'll worry about increasing the conversions. Right. Which is kind of, I think the same thing that you're saying. Yes. But um, so the the ninja phrase is a big a, a big part of this the ninja process yes. and we touched on it a little bit and so um, 
break down the ninja phrase process for us or, or how do you want to talk to that quickly or or yeah so there's a research process that you need to go through and in the masterclass we'll have more about this stuff um uh, that you mentioned before but there's a research phase that you go through you find out what are the phrases that are underutilized under tap but have have traffic have have search volume so we, we dig into those and find out what they are and then the next and, part, and those ones that have like low resistance path, I guess, yeah. Yeah. So, and then the next part of this, well, how can I use that? How can I now that I know that there's these phrases that have like let's say four words or, or five words of people searching for stuff, how can I use that to actually create some content? How can I talk about that? It can be on your blog, it can be on your collection page on your website, it can be on the home page, it can be the about us page. There's all different pages where you can put that content. So. You know, there's, there's strategies on how to place it, where to place it, where to put it, and how to use it in details. But, like, that's the concept, like, using that content in the right places so that when people search for that stuff, you have a chance to to be there on that on the page one. That's the, um, that's, I, that's I, the whole idea. I, I love it. So before we went live here, we were chatting beforehand, and I my plan was to go through all these amazing blog posts that you had, and uh, you just picked one. And you're like, oh yeah, that Shopify versus Etsy for printables. The three things you must consider. Was that the one we touched yes. on? Yes. Yeah. And one. you're like, yes. you're like, well, really, Etsy, the Shopify versus Etsy for printables, that wasn't top of your radar, but you applied this process to that. You were able to create this valuable blog content. And now it's it's not i don't know if rating's the right word but it's driving yes, traffic the, the, rank, the search position or the ranking so like go back a few uh, go back a month and for that search phrase the shopify versus etsy printables which is a popular search term at the moment which i didn't realize until I did the research the popular search term and um if you search that we went anywhere and now if you search that right now at this moment where when i looked on my screen we're in position two on google um which is bringing us traffic every week now um, so it's not the biggest search time in the world, but there's a consistency to people searching for that and it bringing the traffic to us. That, that's amazing. And do you, are you willing to give us a little bit of the process to how you came up with that? Or is that saved for the masterclass or your webinar? Are you willing to dig a little, little bit into no, it? Or? No, a hundred percent. We're, you know, happy, happy to, um, to kind of give the outline of how we do that. So yeah. the first thing is you've got to start looking at what are some of the ninja phrases that you potentially could be tapping into, right? So uh, some people use different tools to find these keywords. Uh, you can also, um, any kind of phrase that you might think might be related to uh, your store, you can uh, look at it first in some free tools. So there are free tools like Google Trends, Pinterest strengths, they are free tools like answerthepublic.com, where it literally gives you the wheel of what people are asking. Or also, I think it's also asked.com as well. It tells yes. you when people search for this phrase, yes. they also search for that phrase. Yes. The other thing you can do is you essentially can just start typing a word uh, um, or a phrase into Google and it will finish it for you. So whatever the menu is, it kind of starts giving you the clue. <laughs> and you're looking here, the key, the secret to this is to go for the, the ninja phrases, the ones that work best are the longer ones. So four words or more. Uh, because they're typically, the, yeah. typically uh, because they're the ones that have much less competition. So and you, can still have, you know, potentially two, three, four thousand searches per month, right? Amazing. Amazing. So that's how we start the process. Then we also use paid tools. You know, we also use a paid tool and it's not mandatory, but, you know, we we use it. it uh, like we use a tool called SEMrush or SEMrush.com. Uh, and that tool, what it does, and it's pretty amazing, it also shows you how easy it is for your competition. So it shows you a specific volume and it gives you kind of color coding, you know, is it green easy or is it amber or is it red? Like it gives you a clue as to how many other people are out there trying to get, you know, how competitive is it to get onto page one of Google? So it kind of shows you the resistance path, right? So you would be silly to start going for something that's red. 
Yes. You know, we're going for something that's green or max amber, depending how much content you already have. But, you know, if you're doing this for the first time, you you go for green. green. Yeah. So if I'm hearing you correctly, you can do your initial research via starting to type into the Google search or go to askme.com or these Google an analytics or whatever yes. and, and start creating your thesis or your idea of your yes. four word phrase or whatever. And then you go to this sem rush is that what it was called yes yes and, and, and we can put the link below in the uh in the comments too that's the tool yeah. we use but there are other tools there are other tools as there. well yeah. what are the other ones called uh there's moz there's moz moz.com there's ah this ah refs there's a there's a whole there is funny tools there's with a funny names. Yeah. cool <laughs> And so then you'll you'll go, okay, here's my thesis. Let's drop it in here. And you're looking for green, yellow, red. And you're like, avoid red, yellow. Let's keep it simple and go for the green. We know our resistance path to this being a, a, a popular blog post or something or yes. something you're that, also, huh? Yes, you also get estimates of how many people are searching that every month. So if if the if the phrase has 10 searches a month, um then that's not as that's not as valuable if it has a hundred or five hundred or a thousand. So, so what are you looking for? Do you have a magic number out there? Or? It depends I, on the industry. It depends yeah. on the industry and the niche and the category. And so they're like, yeah, but I, I wouldn't be going for things for less than 50 searches. Yeah. Well. But even even with 50, what do you normally find that if it's 50, okay, this is getting a little bit too detailed, but <laughs> but essentially if it's 50 and it's green, but you've got four that are 50 and green and are very similar, oh. then you know you can capture those four with just this one post, right? So then suddenly it. it's 200. Like I'll give you an example, like this This is just an example for illustration. If I was looking for cool men's running shoes, I might also find cool men running shoe. And so one has the plural and one has the singular, but you can kind of like collect aggregate, them, aggregate yeah. them together. So instead of 50, it's now 100. Yeah. So you know, so you cool. are not looking just for that one number, but what is the overall potential of that, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, I love that. Um, um, the that's great. What other what other sort of nuggets do we want to uh, do we want to talk about there? Uh, is there anything else that if we moved on from that, you'd feel remiss that we didn't we didn't hit, or would you? I think. We kind of covered that. What do you recommend? Yeah, yeah. I think the the majority of it. Yeah, yeah cool. <laughs> talking for a while, man. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I know it kind of steamrolled. I know. Um, it's all right. I'll, I'll edit. We'll edit. We'll edit. Post. post we'll po post production edit. Although this is live, so sorry, everybody. Um, but uh, somebody's going to resonate. It's good with that it's long then. because then if it's live and people come in late, you know, they still. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um. So you have a webinar coming up too. Do you have a name for your for your webinar yet? Yes, we do. And it is called <laughs> let me just find the exact let, name. Let me just Google that. Uh yeah. yes, it's uh it's essentially in the in the masterclass, we're gonna talk about how to get 347 new sales for your online store in the next 30 days. And we're gonna do that without using your personal social media accounts and even if you don't know where to start i love it and then do we have um three secrets per chance do we have <laughs> what are the three secrets you're we, gonna we do have away? three secrets per chance so we do have three secrets so first of all we're going to talk about the number one mistake that literally kills what we call 99 percent of online sales right so um the reason why we're going to do that because we want to kind of knock that out of the way, right? Because like we obviously don't want to kill 99% of, of our sales. So we're going to first talk about that uh, number one mistake and how instead you can leverage an untapped source full of, honestly, like full of hundreds of hungry customers. Now, the second thing, the second secret that we're going to talk about is to how to own your niche, uh, on what we call a forgotten platform with literally only 11 followers without having to show your face. Um, and the last secret is we're going to talk about how to get an unfair share of highly profitable sales, even if you think you've missed the boat. 
Oh my gosh. I, can we start this webinar now? I wish we could go right into it. I mean, really, come on now. Um, <laughs> so um, everybody, uh, the traffic ninjas.com um, with your six person following, you can generate 40,000 monthly impressions that will lead to sales with uh, Sylvia and Kristen's traffic ninja process. If you want to jump in the master class and learn more, which you clearly should, if you're trying to sell e-commerce and you're a fledgling e-commerce person or you're struggling or what have you, the traffic ninjas.com forward slash master class. Um, I love you guys. This has been so fun. I do want to be cognizant of time and we could go on and on. And I, I'm captivated by this ninja phrase thing and I'm, and I, I want to know more and I would, I'm, I'm sure on your master class and your webinar, you show it in action and you show the power of it. And uh, clearly it's uh it's a, it's a, it's a powerful concept you've got for, for small businesses, um, Shopify businesses. So <laughs> I guess it was worth the bumps and the bruises <laughs> yes. to get there. <laughs> um, I, I, I feel like this might be a good place to end. Um, I know we're, we're, we've been going for a while. Um, I do want to make sure that, well, actually, I did. Let me ask you. I, I'm, let's do a speed round. Let's do a let's do a speed round really quick. And in in 30 seconds or less, this is for you, Kristen. Uh, give me your. <clears throat> you said your framework is how to be seen, how to be found, how to be referred, then how to rev how to convert, how to scale. Basically, you go through this all this amazing stuff. Uh, what are your three number one secrets off the top of your head on how to be seen? On how to be seen. Oof. Yeah. I think it's like don't reinvent the wheel. Look at what's working and um, leverage what's working. Like if it's working for other people, it can work for you too. That's my my number one uh, tip. Like we don't have to like create crazy production value videos. We just look at what's working and trending and we can model that. Fantastic. That was a great answer. Thank you. And again, people <laughs> who are watching, um, this is this is geared towards helping you uh, generate sales on your Shopify store. So maybe when you answer it, the next one, uh, and I'm going to go to you, Sylvia, on this, uh, on the three secrets or tips on how to be found, answer it with how to be found on your Shopify store, perhaps. So how to be found, essentially go for ninja phrase, right? Uh, that's that's the number number one to to be found. Like you... You've got to understand what is it that your ideal hot customer or a hot prospect is really looking for because lots of people don't know how to do that. And I'll give you a quick example is that, you know, people love being creative, which is fantastic. But by being creative, they call their products, like let's say fashion products, right? Let's say that I'm I'm selling this shirt. Um you know, typically an entrepreneur would call this shirt something like, you know, the galaxy collection, right? Or the futuristic something. But that does not really describe the product. You know, what describes the product is the pattern and the color and the texture and how this is sold on that, right? And the the number one tip is like, please, guys, Write this inside the description on your page. Describe your product with what it is. So that when people are searching for it, they can find they can it. Find so you. that you can be found. I love it. And if I'm, I, you know what people I keep on hearing, because I clearly needed, I need to hear it. It's better to be clear than to be clever. It's better to be clear <laughs> yes. than to be clever. And I'm like, all right. I, so the coaches keep saying that. Okay, beautiful. That's a great answer. Um, uh, uh, Kristen, we're going to go to you, the referred, we haven't really touched much on that, but, uh, what's the best way to be referred or get referrals to your Shopify store or how to be referred. Yeah. Uh, I think the hot tip there is to find out where are your customers looking for stuff? Like what type of media are they consuming? Are they reading magazines? Are they on blogs? Are they on email lists? Are they on podcasts? So how can you tap into that audience of your, where your customers are already 
hanging out and how can you get onto those channels? Like people that, as Sylvia said, people who they trust. Uh, if they already trust those people, how can you get your brands, your products into that uh, circle so that you can grab a slice of that trust and also uh, be seen and found there as well? Because that, that referral network is super powerful. And it typically has like three times as high conversion rate, right? I'll give you an example. Like my dad used to say, or my grandma even still says that. It's like, oh, Sylvia, but they said this on the news. It must be true <laughs> because she just trusts it so much, that channel, right? And this is the same with with referral networks where, where your ideal customers hang out, right? Like that recommendation that can just be easily uh, created. It's like one of our customers recently, right? All, all we suggested to her was to put herself on the list where it was like, you know, 10 tile flooring businesses in this specific area. All she did was she just reached out to this blog and she was like, hey, you know, we've got this business. They put her on number two. Like within two weeks, she had a sale that was like roughly around 18 grand. I forgot about that one, but that was just yeah. by getting onto someone else's list. <laughs> Right? That's so. all that's all she did. It was like literally 10 minutes. She didn't even have to write it. That's amazing. So you're helping people do this. You're saying, hey, here's how you can um uh get on or get in, uh get in, I don't know what the right word is, embedded with these other uh referrals. Uh, referrals, yeah. It's, yeah. it's the way we need to think about it is how do we ethically tap into other people's networks? How do we do we ethically Take our share. Love that. So good. Thank you for that. Great, great tip. Um, all right. Remember that. Yeah. This is a good example, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, I'm not sure who's next, but whoever yeah. wants to go, we, we're convert. Then we're like, how to convert? How? What's what's the tip or the nugget of the day for how to convert your traffic uh, to to sales on your on think- your um, stop Shopify store? Yeah, go. I think conversion is a Sylvia topic. Yeah, I love conversions. Uh, so first thing, discount is not going to do it, right? So let's just put it out there. Like discounting is not going to is going to do it. People don't want cheap. They want value. They want an incredible product. So one uh, first ninja tip is to show your product being used. People love seeing how the product is used, right? If you have a candle... You know, if you're selling candles, don't just show the candle on the picture. See somebody smelling it or see that candle being lit in a in a room or in a bathroom, wherever, right? So that's number one tip. Number two is small businesses have typically very limited amount of products, but they are not communicating that scarcity. Scarcity is what essentially pushes people over to go from edit to cart to sell. How many times have I seen our customers have only 30 products left and they don't say it anyway. They don't say I only have 30 left. Like, you know, it's a different shopping experience if you know that there is unlimited 5,000 or 25,000 or 5 million and that it's made, you know, in bulk somewhere in some soulless warehouse, different to somebody having a small business. And it's like, no, I made these handmade. And guys, I've got five. Like, what? that's what it is. See, loud and proud. But people are ashamed of that. They're yeah. like, oh, I only have five, you know. But people have also told us, oh, but I make these things. So I could make an unlimited number of them. So it's not limited. But it's like, but how many can you make a month? Like, yeah, and right now it's limited because you only made five. So <laughs> sing it loud and proud, and that that is honestly what like is going to skyrocket the conversion rate. I love it, and it's authentic. It's authentic, true scarcity, right? And I think the interesting thought around that is a lot of people are like, oh, if they know that I have a limited amount, they're not going to think I'm big and large. And yeah, it's, but the reality is leverage that fact that you're small yeah. that you're a small business that you're quality and that you have limited supply get it while yeah. you can love that yeah it's amazing. okay was there a third or is that enough on that one we oh, might I, I can do one more I can okay do, do more. it for fun and, yeah and, number I, and I really love this one because this one captures additional uh search traffic as well is create a page 
on your Shopify store, create a page, could be like a collection page that is headlined like coupons and discount codes because people often go to search for coupons and discount codes. So create a page inside your store and then write with big letters, hi there, you landed on this page because you're most probably looking for coupons and discount codes. What you need to know is that we're a small business and we create this high quality product in small batches, blah, 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 blah. It's a process, you know, so tell them all the whole story about your business and why you cannot discount. And that honestly is just going to bring them straight to the cards. Mic drop. <laughs> Thank you for that. That's amazing. This is so good. I think it's so counterintuitive to what a lot of people think as well, right? But it's yes. it's actually leveraging the, the the power of what you've got as a small business versus trying to hide from it. It's like let's yes. put that forefront yeah. and and just. God, I love it was it so like. Good. For us in a similar way uh, was us saying we're a team of consultants and we can solve all the problems because we wanted to project the image of being a bigger brand to help us feel more worthy inside. But that's not the key to success. Yeah. And essentially, like when we, you know, when we eventually started to say, hey, we're just husband and wife, we don't have any in the team. It's just us. (laughs) It's just created a completely different ripple effect, right? Because people are like, oh, wow, it's just them, you know? They're not going to like outsource it to somebody else who doesn't know me. I'm going to work with them. It's good. It's good. Um, okay. How to scale. Is this, is that, is that a, is that a, uh, is that a Kristen thing? Uh, uh, once you've got all this <laughs> dialed in or a little bit dialed in and you're like, all right, we get to start scaling this. Give us the top three secrets to, to scale your small business on Shopify. Sylvia loves this. <laughs> Sylvia just loves this topic too much. If I talk about it, I won't hear the end of it uh, when we go to dinner tonight. So no, so. It's, it's okay. It's like, you know, we're the typical husband and a wife where the wife says 250 words and the husband says one. Yeah. That's kind of how it works. Right. But anyway, um, uh, but it is truly my topic. So that's why, you know, Krista handed it over to me. So the really important thing about scaling, and I cannot stress this enough, is, and obviously once you get there, so you've got to be making, you know, at least five, 10,000 consistently with um, organic traffic before you start scaling. But once in, you, re- in revenue. In revenue. Enough, yeah. But once you start scaling, the really important part is to truly, truly understand your numbers. And what I mean by numbers is you know how we mentioned return on ad spend before, your ROAS, like how much you can afford to acquire a customer. There is a term called break-even ROAS. By the way, we've got a whole blog post about it to explain that. Like that is the number one thing you've got to understand before you start putting in any money into ads. So many customers we work with, they've spent money on ads. Like, great. So like, what did they do? Like, what? show me the numbers, show me the metrics. Like, oh, well... I think I got some sales, but I don't really know. Like, Yeah, so the understanding, like precisely understanding what's the break-even ROAS, how much, how, like what's your cost base so that you understand what you're willing to pay and only ever pay that, you know, that will be number one tip. Number two, if your account platform like Facebook is has gotten too expensive and it's not there, go away from Facebook. You know, don't try to beat a dead horse. And trust me, we've tried it and it did cost us like tens and tens of thousands of dollars. So please don't try to beat a dead horse because that horse is dead. You know, you might be able to raise the teeth, but that's about it. But anyway. You can walk the <laughs> <laughs> that's an amazing that's a that's a that's a that's a European analogy, right? You're just like, oh yeah, that's be. what we say in Europe all the time. What's that? Must be. No, no, okay. I'm just having fun. No, it's good. I love it. I've heard that. Don't be the dead horse. I just hadn't heard it in a bit. The T yeah. thing. Now that's another story. That was that was new levels of don't beat a dead horse. <laughs> what did you say about the teeth? How did you say it? Well, I just was like thinking that you might be able to reuse bits and pieces. Like you know, you might be able to reuse the teeth. Like you still might be able to reuse like I don't know what you learned or some footage or you know, creative or things, but just just make sure that you don't tie the success of your business and of your profits to a platform, right? Because it's just a platform. 
you know, they're, like the they're not attached to you. And so you should not have a love affair with them either. Like Baywatch, we said that they didn't tie the success to the one channel. If they did, it would never have been success. It would never be so successful. That's so, amazing. That I love that Baywatch analogy. I ne- it never, until you just told me that story, I'm like, oh my gosh. Like I knew, I kind of knew how they came about, but it, until the way you described that, it's like, oh my gosh, right. They just sold the sin to make vacation rights to as many people as they could and there was a lot of small buyers and then bam it 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 critical mass exactly yeah. critical mass and, that's amazing yeah and then tip number three for scaling would be don't try to go for what's called like branding or awareness or impressions because there is so many agencies out there so many agencies i cannot even stress enough how many customers come to us saying like, oh my God, Sylvia, help me. Like I just spent $10,000 with this agency that was trying to do like branding exercise for me. Like we are small businesses. There is no branding exercise. There is no awareness. There is no like drink Coca-Cola, you know, this does not exist. Like we are going for conversion campaigns, you know, conversion campaigns and conversion campaigns in the first place. Like, 70, 80, 90%. You know, this whole awareness thing, that's that's a big business strategy, you know, like awareness, branding, likes, impressions. Yeah, we need to be collecting emails and we need to be um, converting them into sales. Yeah, and unless unless we're converting either emails or getting people to add to cart, initiate your account and buy, it's not, the the looks are not worth anything. Our second episode is going to be on on getting those emails and converting those emails because that I think it's huge. A lot of people miss the fact that, I mean, I'm guessing as people are buying, you're getting their emails. So start leveraging this email base that you have. Yes, we can can totally talk about that. Yeah, because we've got a lot of content on that too. And, um, and, you know, that's easily a revenue channel, right? Lots of, lots of entrepreneurs don't see that as a revenue channel, particularly in their e-commerce stores, they just think it's just something on the side, but no, it's your channel, right? So if your store is turning over, let's say half a million a year, like your email has got to be at least hundred grand a year. Wow. So somebody who just heard that, who isn't leveraging their email could go, we could give ourselves a 20 to 25% raise uh, overnight by leveraging the email. And that's going to be, um probably the highly profitable relative to the rest. That's- we say in our in our training, we talk about how email is the most profitable source of all of the channels because you've already got a sale from them. So the return on investment is almost infinite because there's no cost of acquisition because you've already yeah. you've already acquired them. But what we also can talk about next time is how many more people give you email address over a sale, over credit card details, right? And so in e-commerce stores. Often entrepreneurs overlook that. And again, they just want that money and they just count that. But it's like, hang on a minute. This person has been going through steps and they've been engaged. They've been looking inside your store now for 10 minutes. Or even if it's just one or two minutes, they already know you. Please collect their email address because they might not be ready to buy anything today, but they might be ready next week or in a month. Or their grandma might be ready two weeks after that, right? So... It's just so important to be collecting email address email addresses from people who are already inside your ecosystem, but it's just hardly ever people focus on that. I love it. Thank you for that. And and I'm gonna do one more one more round. And I know I appreciate you guys for staying on. And this is so much fun because this is this is the I mean, stories are fun, right? But like the tips and tricks and strategies, I love that too. Um, and so thank you for being vulnerable earlier as well. And everybody watching, uh, whether it's live right now or coming on later, um, it's uh, I want to make sure to, uh, it's thetrafficninjas.com. And you can also jump on the masterclass at thetrafficninjas.com forward slash masterclass. These guys have... Um, an awesome uh, webinar coming out. If you've got an e-commerce store um, and you want to, and you want to start getting organic traffic that converts and you don't want to have to worry about how many followers you have or being seen. I heard you say that as well. Um, People need to click on those links and, and start learning from you guys and, 
and just imagine that. So, um, okay. So you guys have your ninja, your ninja, the traffic ninja process system, call it what you will, which includes ninja phrases. Um, and these ninja phrases are, are going into blog posts and things and they're finding, and I, I didn't realize this until you told us that, uh, Hey, maybe it's 50 looks a month, but if we can combine four of those, all of a sudden we've got 200 looks a month and that that can be extremely powerful and, um, can turn into, as you said, one of your clients is getting 40,000 looks a month and who doesn't want that. But you had said earlier, um, I'll give you some tips and tricks in regards to this ninja phrase. So I want to know, um, uh, give us a strategy quickly, uh, a ninja phase strategy, and then a ninja phase tip. <laughs> so uh, ninja phase strategy, we I, and I guess we already talked about this earlier, is that you first need to go for the longer phrases, right? So when you start typing things into Google and Google gives you a suggestion, start thinking about all of those longer phrases rather than just one keyword. And then start thinking about this. How can you start updating your collection page, for example, that's going to relate to that topic? And as Sylvia talked about before, people are not generally, if you're a small business, people are not searching for your small business name or the funky name of your funky product. They're more searching generic phrases like white T-shirts or blue T-shirts or, do you know what I mean? Not, not the funky name of your brand or your store. So you've got to, You've got to be using the phrases that use that cooler language, the more generic language. More generic and and language that is not related to your brand. Hard as it may be on the ego and the psyche, yes. those are that's a key tip and a key strategy. I love it. Mic drop, mic drop. Um, I'm gonna let you guys go. You're two hours ahead, so it's six twenty-nine and thirteen seconds Encinitas, California time. It's six thirty uh Cancun, uh Playa del Carmen time. That's where you are, correct? Yes, correct. Amazing. This has been so much fun. I look forward to uh doing it again and and uh I'm gonna hang up. Uh, I'll end the live and we'll say goodbye offline. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Table Rush Talk Show. For resources to help you sell your stuff, go to B-E-L-O-V-E dot media forward slash resources. That's B-Love dot media forward slash resources. And be sure to subscribe, comment, five star and share. Thank you again for listening.